Relationships that won't last or won't be happily ever afters. Hi guys, my name is Christine Loveridge and I am a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about the relationships that won't last or at least won't be happily ever afters. And the first point I wanna make is there's a mismatch in values. So basically you both want different things. What is very difficult about the relationships where you don't live the same kinds of lifestyles, you don't value the same things, basically there's a lot of arguments um, and that's what it can cause, it can cause a lot of conflict. Now sometimes these relationships can be very very passionate but that's it, there's nothing else. The rest of it is just pretty much arguments um, and bottled up resentment. An example of this could be someone who very much likes to go out partying, very much party lifestyle, you know, likes to stay out until 3 a.m. in the morning with their buddies, you know, having a good, good time, you know, partying. Um, and the other person in the partnership um, doesn't like doing that kind of stuff. Um, prefers to stay at home, likes to go to bed early, you know, is an early riser, um, doesn't really like partying because they think it's unhealthy. You know, someone, if there's two people in a relationship who have those kinds of mixed matching values, it's going to cause a lot of arguments because obviously if you like to stay at home and you're not really that much of a party person and, you know, you like to get up in the morning, you like to go out and exercise, um, it's going to be really frustrating for you for your partner to come home at 3 a.m. in the morning really drunk, um, making a lot of noise probably, um, and yeah, basically disturbing your sleep. So, and uh, if they're in, in a really bad way, they may wake you up, they may be crying, <laughs> if the matter, you know, depending on what happens. We all know what it's like when you're talking to someone who's really, really drunk and you're sober. Um, so obviously that's gonna cause a lot of problems, it's gonna cause a lot of trouble. So, you know, if you wanna be a party person, you know, that's fine, that's cool, you know, but you also need to be with someone who kind of likes that kind of lifestyle. Because if you're with someone who doesn't, it's gonna cause a lot of trouble. And you need to have be living, you know, the same kinds of lifestyles and have the same kinds of values. So uh, one, th like for example, in values, um, someone may really, really value communication and talking things out. Whereas the other person, you know, might be really passive aggressive and, pre and prefers to, you know, give someone the silent treatment. Um, so obviously, again, that's something that's gonna cause a lot of trouble and a lot of problems. Because if you really want to communicate and sort of battle it out a little bit, you know, get everything on the table, um, and they are just sitting there not wanting to talk and just giving you the cold shoulder, it's going to cause a lot of frustration and a lot of problems. And when these things aren't in alignment, when these uh, values aren't in alignment, um, these relationships never work. And if they do stay together, it's not a happy marriage. It's not a happy long-term relationship. So obviously, in knowing that, when we are trying to find someone to settle down with and start a relationship with, we need to find people who like the same kinds of things, who have the same values. Now, it doesn't have to be like everything. They don't have to like the exact same movies you like and the exact same TV shows, you know, you know that kind of stuff. But your main values do need to be in, in alignment, those big deal breakers. So anyway, my next point is, you are not present with each other. So this is actually a mistake that a lot of couples make who are in happy relationships as well. Um, but if you do this for a long time, um, it can really make uh, a big gap in the relationship. It can really make or break a relationship actually. And um, so an example of this is when one of the people in the, in the couple um, isn't really listening to the other person. So let's say you come home and you've had a really frustrating day and all you really want is to just talk about it and, you know, unload onto your partner and for them to cheer you up and to feel better. And so you come to them and they're just sitting there on their phone and they're, you know, you're telling them the story of what happened and they're just sitting there on their phone, they're not paying attention to you. How would that make you feel? Pretty, pretty bad. And it's because the reason is because they're not being present. They haven't stopped what they are doing to look at you, 
and fully try and understand what you're doing, where you're coming from. Now it doesn't have to be just on the phone, you know, you could come home and your partner is playing video games um, or something like that and they're just not paying attention to you or they're watching the TV and they're not paying attention to you. Basically, they're not paying attention to you or you're not paying attention to them. And the, if you don't, if you do this enough, I mean, sometimes you can't help but do it. You know, sometimes you might be daydreaming about something. You've got a lot on your mind as well. Sometimes, you know, you can fall back on this mistake. But if it's what happens most of the time, your partner is going to feel very alienated from you. They feel like you won't understand them or don't understand them. And they feel like basically you're just not giving them any attention. You're not, um, you don't care about them. Because if you're not paying attention to your partner, and basically they're going to feel like you're ignoring them. So it's really important that in order to have a healthy relationship that you are present with your partner, especially when they have something to say and it's clearly important to them. You need to stop whatever it is that you're doing and pay attention. The next thing that makes relationships not work is that sometimes when you've been around someone for a long period of time, you start to become buddies and, you, and the polarity disappears. So what's polarity? So in romantic relationships, usually there is one that is more masculine and one that is more feminine. But over time, both of you kind of become the same kind of person. And sometimes you see this, you know, when you're just out and about, you can see two couples that kind of look the same. They, they've kind of merged into one. They kind of, you know, dress the same. Um, and you can tell that the polarity isn't there anymore. You can tell that they're more buddies than anything else. And this is what can ruin sexual attraction. So the next thing that can really destroy relationships and can and eventually will never work is you stop dating each other. Um, so basically the way that you got your partner is the way that you keep your partner. So if you always, you know, at the beginning of the relationship you used to go out, you used to do all these different activities together, you used to leave little notes for each other. You know, if you no longer do that kind of thing, um, then basically you're just going to revert back to what I was talking about just previously and that is you become buddies. If you're not doing romantic things together, you don't have a romantic relationship. So if you want the romance back in your relationship and you want to maintain the romance in your relationship, you have to pretty much behave in the same way that you did at the beginning of the relationship. So you probably dressed real nice, you know, you took care of your body, um, yeah, I mean, you was basically just doing, you know, putting your best foot forward. And if you stopped doing that somewhere along the line, um, then you're probably reverting more into buddies and friendship than actual romantic relationship. So the way that you got your partner is the way that you keep your partner. So keep that in mind when you're in a relationship. Now, of course, sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes things are more busier, you know, times are more busier than others. And that's fine. But as long as you still try and make time for each other no matter how busy you are and you try and date each other and still try and keep that romance alive. So the last thing, and this can really, really, really make or break a relationship, and that is repulsion and disgust. So when you start becoming really annoyed at your partner and everything they kind of do just makes you want to like, just roll your eyes back, and you feel disgusted by them. You know your relationship is going because if you feel disgusted or you think that everything they do is annoying, then your relationship won't last. And at this point, it's very, very hard to salvage. So the remedy for something like this would be to go back to the last point that I just talked about and that is start dating each other again, start putting your best foot forward um, and if you're like, well, why shouldn't they, what if they don't put their best foot forward? Well, lead by example. So you start putting your best foot forward. So you dress up a little bit. You uh, suggest going out on dates and where to go and, you know, making the plans. You start. You lead by example. And eventually, they will start to do the same. They'll catch on <laughs> and start to do the same. Okay, but you need to be patient because, you know, if this has been going on for a long time, it may take a while to get things back on track. But if you follow these tips, these ideas, um, then hopefully if they're still attracted to you at least a shred, you should still be able to salvage the relationship. 
Anyway, I hope this has helped you. If you'd like help with me personally, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com slash shop. If you would like to ask me a question, then please use the email address provided in this video's description box, especially if you want it to be answered privately. Um, but if you do have a question, you can just leave it in the comments and I'll reply as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like me to discuss something in a future video, also leave that in the comments. And if you also have some tips as well, um, then please also leave them in the comments so we can help each other out. Please like this video, please subscribe, and I shall talk to you again very soon. Bye guys.